Hi, can you believe that this is a quilt as you go quilt? Or this one? Or this one? And this one? And this one too? Hi, I'm Monica and I specialize in Quilt As You Go quilts. And I have lots of tricks for Quilt As You Go to share with you. In this video, I'm gonna show you what I call the traditional technique. It's called the traditional technique because there are no visible joining strips and it looks as if the quilt has been quilted in the traditional way. If you're interested in Quilt As You Go, don't forget to check out my free tutorial on the easy cover strip method. So why Quilt As You Go? I started my career off as a fashion designer because I love sewing and design. Quilting is the one place where I can combine my love of sewing, drawing, creativity, colours and design to create a visual piece of art. Quilt As You Go means that you can quilt small sections with ease before joining them together to make one big quilt. So now I'm gonna show you the technique that I use to create this quilt here. And as you can see, there are no visual joining strips. So let's get started. First of all, when I design a quilt, I like to come up with a theme. Is it going to be say birds, leaves, flowers, or trees like this quilt here? The next step from there is to divide that quilt up into sections. Do I want to do squares, rectangles, or even panels? When it comes to quilt as you go, make sure you use a nice flat low lock batting that won't flatten under the iron. In this video, I'm going to use 12 inch squares. I'll start by drawing a two inch border around the edge. I'll then design my applique to fit inside the two inch border. Hold your layers together with safety pins or quilt basting spray and quilt as desired, making sure that you don't quilt past the two inch border. This method also works really well with sketchy applique, where you apply your applique shapes onto your background fabric with fusible web. You then sandwich it together with the batting and backing, hold it together, and then free motion stitch around the edge of the shapes. So I like to stitch around each shape three or four times and sketch in the detail. This is what I'm going to do with our example. Another little tip is to make sure that your grain line on all pieces of fabric are running in the same direction. So where your fabric runs down in the same direction as the selvage, that has no stretch. Same here. And fabric where it runs across the grain line has got a little bit of stretch like that. That just means that when you go to join your pieces together, the fabric is all going to react in the same way. Oh, and by the way, if you'd like to know more about sketchy free motion applique, check out this video here. And if you'd like to know more about other stitches that you can use on your raw edge applique, check out this video here. Here are my quilted sections with the quilting only staying inside my two inch border line. Every time you quilt something, it's going to shrink in a little bit. So trim your blocks to make sure that they're nice and square. Sew the top layers together with a one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam allowance. Here's my one centimeter or three eighths of an inch seam. Make sure you tie up at the beginning and at the end. Press the seam to one side. And if you're making a quilt that's made out of all blocks, make sure that the seams are going to be alternating from row to row. Make sure that the iron doesn't touch the batting just in case your batting melts. So just use the tip of the iron. You can now see that our top layer is joined together. When we flip over to the back, you'll see that the batting is now overlapping. Now that should be overlapping by either two centimeters or three quarters of an inch. Just double check there with your ruler and we're going to trim away one side. So we're going to trim away the opposite to the direction that we press the seam. So we've pressed our seam that way. So we're gonna trim off this layer of batting. When I'm working in a small section, it's okay to be able to just use your rotary cutter and ruler, but as your quilt gets bigger, I would be very careful. So you'd need to make sure that there's nothing underneath, double check, and then you're right to trim. So I'm trimming three quarters of an inch away, just off one side of the batting. And now when I open that out, you'll see that my batting is butting up 
together. To join the batting together you can either stitch it by hand, so some large stitches to hold the batting together. Make sure you don't pull it in too tight otherwise the top is going to end up being puffy. I'm going to use some batting joining tape. This is a thin nylon strip, it's rough on one side, that's our glue side. And the way I'm going to use this is I'm going to position the strip of batting joining tape over my join with the rough side facing down. I'm going to wind that on, but to protect it, I'm just going to use my backing fabric. Because it's a nylon tape, if you used a hot iron, it would end up melting the batting, the batting tape. Give that a good press. And when you open up, you'll see that your batting is now joined together. To join the backing fabric, lay one side flat, press the other side over by 3 eighths of an inch or 1 centimetre. And you'll see that will cover our raw edge. And all we have to do now is hand stitch that down. When hand stitching your backing down, make sure that you don't catch in any other layers at the ends, the top and the bottom end. You can actually just slip a little card in there and that will stop you from stitching any other layers in. It's okay when you get to the middle section, if you do catch a little bit of the batting in, that won't be a problem. But we have to make sure that our ends are going to be free, all layers are nice and free and separate so that we can join our next rows on in the same way. Now I have to be honest, I'm not a fan of hand stitching, so here's my little trick to avoid having to hand stitch. Line a strip of fusible web onto one of the seam pieces, being careful not to touch the batting joining tape. Peel away the paper backing. I'm using steamer seam light, so my fusible web is actually going to be a little bit tacky, and then I just Fuse my folded edge over. Make sure that there's no fusible web exposed underneath or coming out our folded edge there. I'm going to give that a press. And I'm going to head to the sewing machine and free motion over that seam. And here are my two pieces all joined together. So basically what I've done with my stippling is I have just come over and stitch over the join about every half an inch. If I end up with any large gaps I will come back and hand stitch. Now you do need to do some kind of quilting over the join so if you don't like doing free motion you could actually stitch across going from line to line or you could perhaps put a stencil over that join and quilt the stencil. Now I have used a sew line marking pen so I'm just going to come back and rub out my lines and what I've shown you here is how I have actually made this piece look as though it has all been stippled all in one go but we've actually done this in sections. Now if you were making a quilt in squares what you would do is you would join all of your squares together to make the rows and then join your rows together. I always say build upon your quilt and start from the top and work down because if you join half the quilt together and the other half the quilt together and then you have to join through the centre so it's like you've defeated the whole purpose of quilt as you go. So remember to build upon your quilt. If you need a quilt as you go make sure you start small, don't start on a really big quilt. And when it does come to quilt as you go, remember that when you get to your final rows, if you're making a big quilt, yes, it is going to get heavy, but at least you haven't had to have wrestled with that quilt through the quilting process. I also have an online quilt as you go masterclass, link in the description. So if you enjoy learning with me, check out this video here. Thanks for watching. Bye.